Uh, County Administrator Joy Andrews again joining us this morning. We're talking uh, all things St. John's County. Um, and Joy, yesterday we touched a little bit about uh, the budget, the new budget. Uh, there was concern out there about how this might affect our taxes, but let's talk. Let's first talk about what's kind of covered in this one point two one five billion dollar budget. That sounds big, but we got a lot going on in St. John's County, right? We do. Yeah. Well, so the one point two billion dollar budget. That's really all across the board of all different districts. So you do have. Um, general fund, which is your general property uh, taxes, and you have fire district, you have health district, um, and you have, um, let's see, um, transportation trust fund, which is also its own separate uh, millage. So yeah, it covers really everybody. And of course, um, public safety, fire rescue, Mm -hmm. uh, 75% of their operation is under the fire district millage. 25% of their operation is under general fund. Uh, EMS and um, sheriff's office. Um, it's about forty percent of your general fund uh, millage. So, so yeah, that covers really the recurring operation cost as well as whatever recurring cost um, that is related to any capital projects. So uh, on Tuesday we talked about what's covered in there, and then I kind of highlighted uh, really are just the kind of big variants from the last year. Um, so we talked about, of course, now we're looking at a four regional parks, um, and four fire stations within five to six years, um, in parks situation, we're talking about three years and a fire station situation. We're talking about six years. So, um, you know, if the, the audience didn't really hear about this, so it's really the, uh, Nocatee park, and that also includes a full library. And uh, Greenbrier um, Park, which includes a library hub, Shearwater Park, uh, which includes a library hub, and then um, the Central uh, Sports Complex, which does not re- include any library. It's all about ball fields. Yeah, um, and this sounds know, exciting, the sports complex. It is. Uh, I've yeah. talked to the guys at Parks and Rec a little bit about it, and they're yeah. very, very excited about oh, the gosh. potential here. Yeah, and then, I mean, honestly, I think that really was driven by the needs. Um, mm-hmm. So we have heard from our partners from all over the county um, uh, with different uh, athletic associations, and they are um, growing, like the whole county is growing, and most people move here because we have great school. And so they have children wanted to play sports mm-hmm. or, you know, and they range from little kids want to just recreate or they have kids are really, really amazing, talented mm-hmm. um, in football, um, soccer, lacrosse, and, you know, you name it. Um, and they wanted to be part of these kind of sports um, programming. And yeah. so Athletic Association has been amazing to be our partners, but they are running out of space. So literally, and I have two boys, seven and now 11, so seven year old, 11 old, uh, years old, and they go on these ball fields. They literally divide these ball fields today um, into very small sections so that everybody has opportunity and they still have a way list. So I think um, that is a really exciting uh, inclusion of budget recommendation for this coming year. Yeah. And the four fire stations, which is going to be um, a combination of fire and also sheriff's substation um, in four locations. One is in Flagler Estate, which is going to be our number one priority. Okay. Um, this is a community that mostly really has unpaved the road. Right. And they don't have um, enough impact fee to support uh, either, you know, um, fire station, like large capital facilities. So we are going to really, as a county, as a whole, support that community to building to uh, this fire station for uh, I think we're planning on the end of 2025. We heard from them that, you know, you don't they, they move there. They love the lifestyle, but they also do not tolerate a 20 minutes response time which yeah. it should not be the case really right. uh, if you're living in St. John's County. So that's really our number one priority. And the other three stations that we're going to prioritize um, um, is the Silverleaf um, and then the Beach Walk and then the Rivertown in the next six years. Very um, fast growing community. That's exactly right. And then really the consideration, like I had mentioned to my five board members and then to our community uh, members through all my town halls is that it's not only of course, public safety, that's everything. We want to make sure that if you have a house fire, which we just had um, a couple of days ago, recently mm-hmm. in the Northwest sector, uh, amazing response. 
Uh, but when you have something like that, we have somebody who, you know, you love that is experienced in medical condition. We want to make sure we show up and mm -hmm. not only show up, but we want to show up on time. But also this is relating to your property tax, excuse me, property insurance. So okay. ISO rating is really the, um, the, the system that we're very he heavily looking at and have a fire station within five uh, miles of roadway is a huge um, um, element of how you are rated for your ISO. And that is going to be the determining factor of how much insurance you're paying. And it's not just your residential insurance, but also if you're a business owner, your property as a commercial uh, owner. So thank fire you for stations, that. That's actually what I wrote down. Over yeah. Here. yeah. Like, okay. I, I had yeah. How does that affect insurance in, in, in a positive manner? So if you're Absolutely. not necessarily, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're not necessarily in one of these areas where there is a need to pop up a new fire or sheriff's office, you may not see a change or much of a change in those insurance rates. Yes. Okay. Yes. So if your ISO rating, and they vary throughout the county too. So if you are in an area where you already have a fire station within five miles, and also, and then let me just kind of, as much as I could, um, explain the ISO rating system. It's sure. very complex. Where you have your fire station close to your house or to your commercial property is only one of many, many, many elements. Elements. They also look at your water source. So if you have a fire station but you don't have a water source, that's also a deduction on your mm. um, ISO. So we have to establish the hydrant, um, you know, the location for that. It has to be adequate. And if you have an area that has less uh, adequate water source then their solution is that we have to bring water tanks um, and then, you know, of course, the man with the engineers and um, ISO rating agency would have to ask you to essentially video um, how quickly you can fill up a water tank uh, engine and um, move that engine to the location that you're trying to have the rating evaluated on and then empty the tank. Um, if you can do it adequately, then they will give you plus points for, for that specific activity. So it's like a grading system is what it I'm is understanding. It is a grading okay. system. And also has everything to do with how you're training your staff, what kind of training facilities you have. So um, it's a very, very complex system that we're now actively going through. But fire station construction is really the, the, the beginning of that um, improvement plan, I guess, mm -hmm. for many, many parts of our county. Okay. Um, so that's another exciting um well, when I say exciting, if that does happen, that's exciting uh, proposal in our 2025 recommended budget. Uh, those are two big uh, components. And of course, we have also talked about we wanted to uh, look at um, the the Meadows Park and because we had also um, changed our kind of plan initially to have a library there. Now we're looking at um, based on the HOA's recommendation that we need to look at a community park. So that's another component we are incorporating in uh, 2025 budget recommendation. Mm. Um, let's see what else is included in the budget recommendation. Joy, Joy just so we, before we get sure. too far away from the ISO, I know like they come in classes I, and I don't know this and these guys expect me to be the government guy <laughs> um, and I don't know this at all. So maybe you can help me out. So the ISO comes in like class one, class two. I don't know the difference. What is the goal of the county? And do you, I mean, is there a spe specific class that you want kind of county wide? That yeah, you're what's targeting? a good one? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what's that point that you might? Yeah. Well, Carlos with the city would be the most amazing person that you can ask about that question. And we talk to him often because they are very successful in their ISO rating. Um, I don't know the exact uh, goal. Of course, the lowest that I w that the lower the better. So mm -hmm. the, if the lowest that we can go, it would be the most um, so if, ideal. If you, if you yeah. shoot for a class one, then that's okay. That's, yeah. that's that makes sense. Yeah. Now. Okay. Okay. Because I didn't even know. I was like, okay, it's a class five better than a class. Four. <laughs> right. Are you going oh, yeah. for a seven? Like, yeah. yeah. The lower the better. And yeah. I, I'm not familiar with the A B class. We talked about the worst is ten, and then mm -hmm. if you the, the lower you go, the the less you pay your insurance. Mm -hmm. um, our goal money wise because i didn't understand like how the class works and but money wise our consultant um had suggested that you're looking at a potential 100 million annual saving on your property 
um, owners. So that would include residential it's and huge. commercial. And that's yeah. huge. Yeah. Huge. And that's concentrated in pockets of the county because you have a, a quite large area that's already within uh, the five miles and half water source and especially the new development area. But then you, do, you do have a south portion of the county. You have the portion of the county that is on the um, southwest and then a little bit of it going to the northwest the section um, is a little less covered. So, so yeah, so different parts will see the benefit differently and the saving differently. But that's the aggregated saving that we're trying to accomplish. So if you can take a, like Blackler Estates from a class six to down to a class three it can be a big big save. absolutely okay that, yeah i just wanted to that's clear cool. that up because I, I was like trying to figure it out and i was like i don't know i didn't yeah, yeah. that's a nice yeah. lesson yeah. today so, that's good yeah. thank you and yeah. you know we i jokingly rag on libraries a lot right because <laughs> uh, in my opinion it's like who goes to the library in 2024 right but there's obviously a focus on libraries for you guys I, i've heard heard you mention libraries numerous times mm -hmm. um uh, within this budget so why is there such a a big focus on popping up new libraries across the county? What do you guys see as the importance of having a library near nearby uh, people so, in these areas? Yeah, and um, I we hear about that as well. So we do have kind of a two camps of the school of thoughts about the library. Mm -hmm. um, I happen to go to library too. I'm just you know a cheap person. That Thank I you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Joy. Community <laughs> center. Go ahead and say. Dave is our library yes, advocate. I'm the library advocate. Yeah. 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 Air conditioning is so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Free Wi-Fi. Exactly. Yeah. What do we want? Yeah. Nice stats. You know, always very very helpful. Absolutely. I, I never learned to read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've got movies too. Yeah. <laughs> so we actually do have a uh, a long-standing master plan. We hired a consultant and this is probably 10, 15 years ago um, on library. So there was a master plan on building libraries for different parts of the county. And um, at the time, the library master plan, well, we still have that plan. We just really never implemented it because we never had funding for it. Um, as for a Northwest library, Northeast library, North Central library, Rivertown library. Um, well, it is very expensive to build and it's only getting more expensive mm -hmm. every year we wait. Um, we think that, you know, the library, of course, library concept has evolved over time just because how we are um, using our technology. But the big part of that, and Davey said it, the big part of it is the community center component to it. It's the programming. It's very similar to your sports complex and your ball fields and your playground. Um, it's a place where the kids can go to have programming and our library does amazing job to do story time. They do uh, crafts and, um, you know, different types of programming that actually is engaging the kids in a way where really building a population of, of a, a lifelong readers. And so, and then now they are doing summer program with the parks recreation, um, so yeah, it is really, truly, I think something that has been called for by our community. Cause I had mentioned this to many communities that, you know, cause they asked me why certain part is getting a hub and certain part is getting a full library. Mm -hmm. Well, when we talked about the, the parks and recreation concept, um, it was really the board said, well, why don't we look at the library? Uh, because now you're already building a parking lot. You're already building um, the drainage, the road access, those are the big ticket item for any construction um, for a big capital project. So if you are already mobilizing your contractor and building all these things, then there is a significant cost saving in building a library on the same site. Mm. And besides, we're already on the land. So we talked about library hub concept throughout the county, whichever park that we were going to build. Well, Nocatee uh, community they are very special. They, uh, they, they, they organized themselves. They, they contacted uh, co commissioners. And so that became a, 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 a discussion a few months ago that do they need a hub or do they really need a full library? And I think the board made a decision that with 35,000 population, a full library is warranted. So that is something really is driven by the community. 
um, the parents know. The parents really know what's best for their kids, mm. and I think they. And this is how democracy works. Um, we talked a lot about the bookmobile too, and yeah. how much of a resource that is as well. Especially about by two ten, I actually thought it was going to be more prevalent down in Hastings or something like that. And I, we heard from the library that no, there's a really big boom for a need for the bookmobile. So, yeah. do you see that as a big resource in our community? Absolutely. And in the, I'm, I'm so appreciative that you actually remember this. I forgot about this. There's a one uh, new bookmobile and bookmobile route is going to be added in 2024 recommended by. Budget. Um, and you're absolutely right. Um, I did not not really know about this because, you know, oftentimes you only know what's relevant to you and your life experience. So how it was explained to me was um, we are now having increasingly large elder population. Some of them are homebound and they are readers and they um, they really enjoy having these bookmobiles are being driven to a location where they can easily access you know, to to grab their books mm -hmm. um, and maybe talk to our outreach specialist. You know, we have amazing staff. Um, so, yes. So that is something that uh, Deborah, our director, has been feeling very strong about advocating for. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. I know a lot of this, uh, a big chunk of this budget goes to public safety. Yes. Um, we touched on this a little bit. The fire stations, the sheriff's offices. I saw when we were reading yesterday. Um, that it sounds like we're looking at demolishing the county jail, putting up another one. Is that, is that, did I, no, am I remembering this? I, 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 no, we're not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, no, we're, we're I not thought it said something. It wasn't. Did it say something about demolition in no, there it yesterday? Was, it was renovation. Renovation. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I just got my words mixed. I can't yeah. remember from yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. I have the same problem. <laughs> yeah. But we are was, was looking at and, and updating facilities. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. I, it, years ago, there was a plan for, uh, maybe that's what you got that idea from. Years ago, there was a plan about jail expansion and yeah. things like that. But uh, um, Sheriff Harwick has been very cognizant about how to uh, run the operation and maintain and also, kept, you know, um, while sustaining, I guess, the, the growing needs of everything um, in a cost-contained way. So, yeah, so jail expansion is not on the table at all. There is no demolition, and it's really incremental renovation um, is okay. what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then I, I saw there was some in there for uh, sheriff's office personnel, correct? Yes. At this time, it, you know, when, when of course, I... I, so this is kind of how process works. Um, I did my 28 sessions of all these budget stuff, dialogue with the departments based on the operation uh, needs and also community needs and the community members, members come and talk about what they wanted to see in a the budget. Then I evaluate um, all the needs and prioritize them because we have more needs than we have money for. Mm -hmm. And we can't support everything that everybody wants. So then we make a prioritization based on what we know of what the community wants and needs. And then we put together a balanced budget to recommend to the Board of County Commissioners, which was what happened on Tuesday. My recommended budget was based on, and again, it's all only within um, the realm of Board of County Commissioners. Mm -hmm. So the sheriff is a constitutional officer, so he recommend his own budget, which he did. Um, so my recommended budget does not touch uh, the sheriff's office. It does touch okay. fire and everybody else. Okay. But that conversation came up in the recommended budget. Um, I think it was Commissioner um, Christian Whitehurst. I think it was the one mentioned. And then I think it followed by the rest of the commissioners um, to be supporting a increased starting salary for our deputy sheriff uh, to make the salary more competitive compared mm -hmm. to the surrounding counties. Um, and I think the number that they discussed was, um, well, where we are today is 55,000. Mm -hmm. The sheriff recommended in his recommended budget, well, budget request was 56,000. So he did incorporate some increase for the deputy sheriff, again, uh, with the mindset of making sure that, you know, he he's making sure that he's containing his budget within a percentage. He had a goal. Um, so, but with that, after the, the proposed budget from the sheriff, there was more information coming from Duval, Clay, Flagler, Jackson, because everybody's doing the same thing. Um, it, it, it made it kind of clear that our even 56,000 is no longer 
um, competitive.、Mm. So I think that's why the conversation came about.、Um, and、um, I think a Christian said competitive, like not on the plus side or the minus side. Well, we're too low. We're oh, we're too, too low. low. Okay,、yeah. good. So, okay. So then, because I'm looking at those counties, I'm like they rely on us a lot of times to get them out of trouble too. So I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah. Th- so and then we're losing、um, our deputy to other market.、Um, mm-hmm. So fifty eight thousand is, I think, what they had discussed. So the next step is, so it's not in our recommended budget. The next step is because this is the process now, which you know this is how it's being designed for. All the conversation about what do we want more of, what do we want less of from all the commissioners, and then we're gonna based on their feedback to build these difference、uh, variations of the recommended budget into their. Potentially tentative adopted budget, and then the final adoption of the budget. So we have two more steps、uh, to get to the final budget that hopefully most people will be happy with. And, and the, I have a little pushback on on I I, I want the sheriff department to to get paid what they deserve to get paid, but I I hear that argument. Oh, we're losing. What are we actually? I never see anybody leave St. Johns County. A school district does the same thing. And are you say, out there at St. John? Are you、no. out there at the jail watching、no. everybody every day? No, but people don't move away from、yeah. St. John's County. I can get you in, man. But I don't I, know about that. We, we got a lot of people moving out of St. John's County the now. Equi- the equity of you know they should be paid properly and stuff like that. But I hear that argument all the time from the school district. I hear it from、uh, you know different municipalities and stuff like that. Maybe recruiting wise, it, you know, because it is a starting thing. But you know, I I hear oh we're losing people don't move away from St. John's County, they just don't, you know, unless they were already going to move away from St. John's County. I don't know,、so、man. Us, us I don't know, do, man. I can't say do, we can't say nobody is moving away no, no, from no, St. John's County to get better jobs. But I see what those numbers are. Don't sure. Just, don't yeah. Let's not just say that. But I mean, as far as recruiting goes and first staff and bringing in quality people, go with that argument. Let's not say we're moving. They're moving away. You know, I would like to see、I'd、the、like、numbers to see too. What, but if that's、like、true, I mean, if、are. that's true, we can't argue with it. Yeah, I mean, if、I'd、it's、like、true, it's true. Numbers are because yeah, I'm with you. My my sniff test, it's not happening. Okay. <laughs> well, well and, you got an old nose now, yeah, Troy. You're getting older, buddy. <laughs> I just have a quick question for Troy, really quick. So,、yeah. like, if they step away from their job, like, say, a teacher is no longer a teacher, but she is now an entrepreneur, are you counting that as a number, or you're saying、yeah. they physically leave? Yeah, they, we're. For the, argument, the argument is, is we're losing them to other municipalities, right? Okay, and I don't believe that's true. I believe once they get here,、that's、they love to be here, and work environment is, believe it or not, work environment is way more important than than pay. But they also have to be、But、able to afford to live here, and it is expensive to live here. Yeah, and and you know what? A, a lot of these law enforcement guys, that's the reason they have to do these overtimes and and fire. They do other jobs. Yeah, and you know what? All of us have to do that. All of us have to do that. But I can say I can say as a recruiting tool, the very beginning salary, you know, you, you, you got a good work environment. The sheriff's a good guy. I mean, Joy's a wonderful person to work for. I mean, we got a good work environment here. So、yeah. I, I think recruiting wise is a better argument than saying we're losing them to other counties because I don't think、okay. I I really would like to see what those numbers truly are. And and, and that argument's been going on for decades. And I've. Just、yeah. Now I'll get off my soapbox. Wants to and, clear it up. I'll get off my soapbox. Judy, is there, Joy, is there any insight th- that you have, or does anybody at the county kind of have、uh, a perspective on what those numbers of officers actually are that are leaving our area for other municipalities? Well, let me let me、um, before I answer that question, let me kind of, and I don't know if I actually said that to the, you know, we're. Our board members are supporting an increase. The starting salary is based on the data of us losing either officer,、um, deputy officer, to other counties, or you know, and then that is also true in the case of the firefighters.、Um, and I agree with you. I think just to be fair, because、uh, uh, Sheriff Harwick did come up and talked about you know his sentiment about this、uh, increase on the starting pay. He did say that St. Johns County is a special place. We're not trying to compare ourselves with Duval County. They have their own problems.、Um, they have their own little compensation structure that is different from ours.、Um, you know, for example, they're not FRS, so、mm-hmm. we do have a lot to offer. But I think the sentiment at the end of the day is that you're right. It is a recruitment tool, but also is. To resource those、uh, constitutional officers to be able to take care of their people who are already here, 
And a lot of officers and firefighters too, they don't necessarily even live in St. John's County because they couldn't afford it. Mm. So if we have enough resource, um, I think the board sentiment is how about let's prioritize those resources to take care of those people who are providing the public safety for us. So that's really, um, I think the conversation went about, I don't think there was anybody arguing that, oh, we're losing 10 a year. I don't have that data. So mm -hmm. I'm try I don't yeah. have an answer to the question. That's yeah. why I'm trying to re rephrase this dialogue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You okay. did it really well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Beauty pageant style. Yeah. You made it happen. <laughs> so we talked a little bit about rollback discussions um, concerning the millage rate. I believe this is another area where Troy gets this a little better than me, and you probably have a little bit more insight than Troy. So what does this all what does this all mean when we talk about rollback discussions? So. Um, First of all, I think the um, I, I kind of wanted to give a little bit of overview of what actually happened on Tuesday and okay. um, and what's going to happen after that. Well, um, the process, like I said, the the budgeting process, and I, I apologize, I didn't listen to the uh, internal discussion yesterday about the budget. So if I'm redundant, um, but I won't take much time on this. So Tuesday, I presented to budget recommendation. And that is subject to change and it will change with expectation. I never really had any expectation that that won't change, but it's just a starting point. Um, and also in terms of the millage adoption, what Tuesday happened was the board is required by state statute to set a ceiling millage rate. Mm -hmm. So in all categories, and that is the rate that they can go down from, but cannot go up from. So, then the next two hearings that is going to happen in the following couple months is that then they will adjust their budget and they're going to, um, you know, if they wanted to bring the millage rate down from the rate they up adopted on Tuesday, which they still can, then we're going to talk about the budget reduction because the recommendation is based on the assumption of a flat rate, which was our recommendation. So um, rollback rate is a millage rate reduction. So it's essentially what it means is that the aggregated collection of the property taxes from all categories will remain the same as last year, regardless of your property yeah. values, which, which essentially means that the millage rate will be reduced. So people are going to see a, a lower rate millage. Um, well, that should be a celebration, right? Um, You're like, um, <laughs> well, it's a, I, it could be a celebration. Okay. Um, so you are looking at, so I, I will kind of give a few elements and I'm not going to say it's either a celebration or not a celebration. Okay. I'm not going to say it's either going to happen or not going to happen because the conversation is ongoing. I think, uh, commissioner Joseph was, uh, probably the stronger supporter of, uh, the rollback. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say stronger support. I guess she was the one initiated the conversation about let's do rollback. I think a commissioner Henry Dean was kind of agreeing with her. Like I, I would love to see a rollback. And, but today's purpose that our job today is to set the ceiling. And then we can talk about if we want to do a rollback, then what kind of budget are we looking at? Where do we cut? Um, so, Millage rate reduction, I, I, I do wanted to give a, a few things. Millage reduction to the rate uh, that would produce the same amount of taxes that we did last year um, is going to be a, a major reduction in the budget, um, in our operation. And so it's going to affect how we fund different parts of programs, capital projects. Um, it's gonna affect our level of services. But that is, and this is kind of why I say this is kind of how democracy is supposed to work. This is a, a wonderful conversation to be had, and this is, uh, and it needed to be had. So what is the community's um, want is really at the end of the day, what's important. And I, and I, I do think that the reason I say that this is working really well as it's designed for is our elected officials are talking to their constituents, trying to understand what is more important to them and then make an informed decision. And that decision is going to be made in the next few months. Um, they set the ceiling 
rate Tuesday, which we now know for sure, at least we can celebrate that our in, uh, millage rate, our property tax rate is not going to go up. It's going to, to minimum, stay the same. Okay. But they can still go down um, if they continue on this conversation and realizing, oh, you know, people want to save rather than want the level of service because mm. you can't have both. I get you, you now. You cannot have both. Um, so Jesse did a quick um, analysis on the average of saving. First of all, you have majority of, well, I guess I, I won't throw the percentage, but we have a lot of our homeowners are um, capped by uh the save homes. Yeah, um, we, we talked a little, bit about, yeah, yeah. a little bit about that. So yesterday. the three percent is all you're going to be seeing increase uh, because you're capped at three. If you are a non um, homestead uh, household, then you're capped at ten percent. So mm. so there are all kinds of caps in place to protect your uh, property taxes increase um, if there is any. So. In, uh, on average, Jesse actually did a quick ca calculation. I think it's he said about one hundred sixty dollars a year um, is what you're going to save by having a rollback millage reduction. Um, and then the end result of that is about forty million dollars reduction um, in in the funding that is available to to program operation to fund the capital projects and. Because of the conversation now, what what we're doing right now before our next hearing is to prepare a option list. Essentially, okay, well, board, we understand that we you are concerned about our residents, uh, how much they're going to pay mm. uh, for their property tax. Let's give you a option list so you can pick and choose which one you want to keep, which one you want to leave out, because we can't do the same thing by having less money. And this so, is going to be something that kind of the public is going to have some input on, I assume, or well, the hearings did? are uh, right. hearings are going to be public meetings. So yeah, and and I have some comments on that, and and just so everybody understands, we we talked about millage. Millage is your property taxes that you pay, so that's the rate in which your your property is taxed. That um, going through two recessions as parks and recreation person. Right before those recessions, the politicians decided it'd be a good idea to do a rollback. And it almost strangled uh, our services. So, you know, we're, we're doing okay. The millage rate is extremely low compared to other counties. I don't know if we're still the lowest, but I know we were. We're one, one of the lowest. We're yeah. one of the lowest in the north, northeast Florida. You know, with elections coming and stuff like that, you know, what I'm seeing in, uh, in business right now it looks very similar to the start of certain recessions that I've witnessed before. It is probably one of the worst times, in my opinion, to do a rollback. I remember last time when it happened, uh, we did a rollback, and then the state put a cap on how much you could uh, raise the millage to just to survive. And it strangled us uh, in, our, in our government being able to even get back to even. We were underwater. You know, 2007, 2000. Eight, we were underwater. Yeah, and I don't want to see that happen again because I think we're very healthy as a county with our services. You know, um, you know, we do this rollback. That raise that we just talked about for the sheriff department probably goes out the window in a lot of different situations. Hey. And, and so think about, oh yeah, I want to save that, know that. I want to save that hundred and sixty dollars. But I, you know what, I'd prefer. To pay the hundred and sixty dollars and have the fire department show up on time, right. have my kids have a part to play in, and have the sheriff department paid equally and 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 fairly and show up on time. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I'm I'm very cautious when I hear rollback because I went through two of them and both of them sucked. Really? But also, I think we're in a, a uniquely different time today, right? To where we are still kind of in the middle of a boom in St. John's County to where more people are buying houses. People are still moving here, not at the rate they were two, three years ago, obviously, but we are still a fast growing County to where we're popping up new homes all the time. And we're bringing in taxes 2005, from that. We were the highest growing County in the entire country. Okay. 2007, we can barely breathe because we did a rollback. Mm -hmm. So but we did a rollback leading into a recession, though, right? Yeah. And, and that's what I'm saying. That's where we're at right now. As soon as, as soon as that recession hits, you know what? That growth stops. Yeah. You know, it, it just stops. And, I, and like I said, I've been through it twice, you know, and you're supposed to study history so you don't make the same mistakes. So, so I, I'm glad that um, 
you know, we were, I, I was right there with you. Yeah, you, did, you, know? you, yeah. you had just started. Yeah, I was when, right there with you. I, I started flew. by, um, by the time of, I guess, getting to the recession, or it was 06, 07, 08. Mm -hmm. My first really task um, when I was in budget office as an analyst is analyzing furlough or analyzing early uh involuntary early retirement and, mm -hmm. and reduction in workforce. So that is going to be what we have to do if we do a rollback. I think to your point, Choi, because we're still living the effect of the rollback that uh, the board, the previous boards did mm -hmm. um, years ago. This is a this is a fact I don't know that uh, people, some people understand is that rollback which equates to millage reduction millage mm -hmm. rate reduction mm -hmm. is permanent it's not just for 2025. Mm -hmm. so pete you were talking about well this is maybe the time to do rollback when you decide to do rollback the rollback is going to continue on forever so mm -hmm. so your reduction in 40 million dollars is not going to just be this year it's going to be every single year onward until ah, yeah. until a point where they raise the millage. Now we know raise millage is not a thing to in St. Johns County. You know, I'm I'm not saying that has not been really a thing in St. Johns County. So I wanted to at least emphasize on um, when you have a millage rate reduction, the financial effect is permanent. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. and that's I, and I don't think people fully I didn't grasp know. that. They think, oh well, we'll just go back to where yeah. we're at, and you can't. You can and politicians. Whenever you say you're raising the millages, like, it's a death sentence. It is a for real life. Is it okay? Yeah. So, the um, board did also. Um, I think um, to be fair, talked about okay. Well, if we want to talk about rollback, roll let's leave the public safety out of this. Meaning, like public safety related millage rates are not rolling back, which I don't know how it works. I don't think hmm. we have to figure it out. So, but essentially I think the sentiment is that let's leave public safety out of this uh, rollback rate situation and let's focus on if they do a rollback, uh, let's focus all the fact on the non-public safety side of the millage. So which really is parks and uh, yeah. library and transportation quality of life. And, and quality of life and coastal and all these things. And so that would, um, I don't want to use the word is exacerbate because it has kind of a negative um, yeah. feeling to it. So it's because we're talking about celebrations. Right. So maybe it could be a celebration if you're not a parks guy, if you're not a library guy, if you're not a coastal guy, if you're not a road and bridge guy, like mm -hmm. you're not worried about any of that, then yes, it is a celebration. Um, so really it depends on what the residents truly do want. Um, and they can decide how you how they want to pay for it, or do we want to have a saving that's more important than then I hope that that's the board's decision to make. Um, but we're talk, talking about twenty to fifty percent reduction in um, in these quality of life departments and non public safety, and it's not just we're not getting a raise; it's uh, well, workforce reduction. And the other thing major is, if we reduction. do go into a recession, that means property values go down, which means you're property taxes go down at that percentage also. So it's not just you're cutting cutting your millage. If if we go into a recession and property values go down, that's everybody's touched by that. Mm -hmm. And that means that we're not collecting money to do the basic services. Yeah. Right. And right. I you know, I I like I like my money as but as much as anyone, but we live in paradise. Let's keep paradise. Let's yeah. not try let's not try and let's not try and be, you know, some Mississippi city that has right has, oh, falls yeah, apart. Yeah, yeah. Great taxes. Yeah, but you yeah. have nothing. No, and and just to kind of play devil's advocate again, obviously, recession is worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. It's not a guarantee that we go into a recession and that we're in worst case scenario. Right. I mean, I I, I can tell you're you that, saying the I, elements you, are there. Yeah, the I, 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 the I, elements I, may possibly be there. Right. But boy, that that 2008 recession was a very very unique thing, and I. I, I don't personally see the signs that I saw back then. I wasn't in government, obviously, mm. but obviously recession is worst case scenario. We hope we are never there, but it could happen, I, but I, it's a very I bad had, scenario. I, you know, er, early 90s, it was a very similar situation. The dot-com pulled us out of that. Um, you know, what the bankers did in the, in the mid-2000s is another thing. We never you know, know when it could hit. Yeah, and, and, you know, we and, never really know true. when it could hit. And, and I mean, and 
And we're going to always flow in and out of those type of things. And, and the way the trend is going, and if we ignore it and go, oh, it's not going to happen again, that's when the hits a fan. Right, 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 you know? right. So, uh, so I, would, I would say, and I was just on my way to the studio, I was listening to NPR, the other equally fabulous um, radio show. <laughs> They're I a little boring, but that's to. okay. God bless them. They're an aesthetic, yeah. Um, We've never had that comparison before, by the way. <laughs> Um, well, they're in touch in a different way. You guys are in touch with our local people. So yeah, equally fabulous. Um, so actually the, the newest sh show popped up on my podcast was Impossible American Dream. And it was the 30 year um, following of the recession and um, well, not just recession, actually 30 years of the globalization, the deindustrialization in the middle part of the country was talking about Milwaukee and how, you know, people are struggling and, um, and, but I'm thinking, you know, uh, and that's a very, very um, informative interviews with people there. I think the difficult decisions, and I don't envy any of my commissioners, difficult decisions they have to make is that they have to make sure they're in touch with who we are mm. as a community. Mm -hmm. um, are we, what are we worried about to what the community truly wants? And I think that that's something that they have to work really, really hard on the next couple months to make sure that they do make a decision that is in line with this community's wants and needs. Which is those open forums you're talking about yeah. as attending and, and the surveys you guys send out, right? Yeah, and yeah. people yeah. need to show up. They need to make their voices heard. At yeah. the, even if they don't always feel like they're being heard, they are being heard. Mm -hmm. And so people need to show up, make their voices heard. Like you said, Davey, uh, re uh, reply to those surveys mm -hmm. because this is where the commissioners get the public input. And if there is an overwhelming response to a certain uh, issue that just can't be ignored, then they have to make a decision based on that. Yeah. You know, they have to. They have to serve their voters. That's where public's coming forward. Hope they, they would want to do that. Um, Joy, thank you so much for coming by. Oh, very, very informative. Yeah. I appreciate you clearing a lot of this up yeah. for us and just having this discussion so with us. I think it's so uh, important that we're able to have these discussions um, in, in forums that are, you know, more than just a few minutes at a county commission meeting. Yeah. You know? That's so good. Yeah. Thank you so much. We, my pleasure. we appreciate your time.